Hi and welcome to our video about Paul culture. If you grow some or even most of your own food, you might think you're doing your part to live more sustainably. But if you're not embracing Paul culture farming or gardening, you could be missing out on big ways to lower your footprint. So, let's look at what Paul culture is. Paul culture is an agricultural method that aims to mimic nature in its design planting species that complement each other in the same growing space. So, when we compare monoculture with polyculture, polyculture is the opposite of monoculture. In other words, fields with row after row of corn, which includes most modern industrial farming. An increasing number of farmers and gardeners are turning to polyculture techniques as they discover how it can eliminate pests and diseases, improve the soil, not to mention increasing your yield and the number of things you can grow. First, let's talk about how polyculture started. Until the advent of modern farming, and even now in many parts of the world, polyculture was and is the dominant farming method. A well-known example is the three sisters cultivated by Native Americans, consisting of squash, corn, and beans. In the three sisters' polyculture, the tall corn acts as a support for the beans to grow on. The beans fix nitrogen into the soil to be used by other plants, and the squash creates a ground cover that repels both weeds and pests. Another example is the seven-layer forest garden, which differentiates plants by their use of vertical space. It includes a canopy layer of trees at the top, followed by dwarf trees below, then shrubs, a layer of herbaceous plants, the rhizosphere, for example, root vegetables, then ground cover plants, pink strawberries, and finally vines. So, what exactly are the benefits of polyculture? There are lots of reasons to try polyculture, whether in a small kitchen garden or a large-scale farm operation. But perhaps one of the best reasons to try polyculture farming is that it can greatly increase your yield. Compared to monoculture gardening, you can fit more plants in the same space by filling in the gaps. But there are more benefits beyond a more plentiful bounty. Your crop will have a better resistance to pests. A common practice in polyculture is to surround some plants with herbs, whose strong smell confuses insects and masks the plant scent. You will achieve better soil quality. As mentioned with the three sisters, certain plants like legumes, clover, and lupine replace nutrients that other plants deplete from the soil, so less fertilizer is needed. You increase biodiversity. Polyculture farms aim to increase diversity both to mimic nature as well as to safeguard against low yields. If one crop fails, another one can substitute. It offers greater suppression of weeds. By utilizing more of the available space and planting cover crops, unwanted weeds that can compete for resources are avoided. There are some downsides to polyculture that we should talk about. Depending on the specific gardening methods you use, polyculture gardening can be more labor-intensive than other forms of gardening. One method of sowing beds involves mixing and broadcasting seeds, which can result in beds that require roofless thinning to avoid too much competition. This method also requires detailed knowledge about what each plant sprout looks like to differentiate them from weeds. Identifying which seeds you have broadcast is one of my main issues with it. However, when you see the resulting harvest, it's worth it. I mean, who cares whether it's zucchini, melon, cucumber, or pumpkin, it's food and it's good. And while it might be simple for Mother Nature to figure out which plants grow best together, it's more challenging for mere mortals. Factoring in combinations of soil acidity, sun requirements, nutrient needs, and more for combinations of species could certainly require more complex planting than planting a row of each plant and calling it a day. Now that we know these things, how can we start with polyculture? How you start utilizing these gardening methods depends on the status of your project. If you're just starting a new garden or farm, 
You'll want to incorporate polyculture or permaculture techniques into the initial design of the farm to maximize the layout for efficiency and convenience, such as where to collect and store water for irrigation. Polyculture is all about working with nature instead of against it. So start by identifying the anchor points of your garden. This includes any trees or perennials that won't be going anywhere. Use these plants as the centerpieces to develop polycultures around. When planting annuals for the next season, consider companion plants for these species. You should consider making use of plant guilds. We have a downloadable apple tree guild on our website as an example. Plant guilds might be my favorite feature of polyculture gardening, thanks to their easy-to-follow framework as well as an opportunity for creativity. As mentioned above, trying to determine the perfect combination of plants for a polyculture garden can be bewildering. Enter plant guilds. Guilds also utilize companion planting, but it's done in a specific way that can simplify the process. Every member of the plant guild should have one or more roles to play, and a proper guild should have at least one of the following. Nitrogen fixers. To avoid adding fertilizers, it helps to plant species that fix nitrogen back into the soil. Pollinators. Flowers or herbs to attract bees. Dynamic accumulators a fancy term for deep-rooted plants or vegetables that can break up deeper soil and allow for better air and water absorption. These include comfrey, one of my absolute favorite accumulators. It also happens to be the perfect companion plant for asparagus, my favorite vegetable. Repellers, often strong-smelling herbs that confuse bugs. Mulchers, usually perennial plants that add a steady supply of compost in the form of drop leaves. These are perfect for chop and drop, an awesome way to add carbon to your soil. Suppressors, usually bulb plants that act as an underground barrier to prevent plants like grasses from creeping into your planting zone and competing with other roots for nutrients. Lemongrass is one of my favorites here. Depending on the kind of design you want, you can often choose plants that fulfill multiple roles. For example, daffodils are excellent suppressors and also attract pollinators, and many bug-repelling herbs work as ground cover. Guilds are also a wonderful chance to get creative and playful in the garden. Guilds have a lot of flexibility so that you can design them for all kinds of purposes. Whether you're short on garden space and want to maximize yield, or you run a multi-acre farm and want to reduce your environmental footprint, polyculture farming may just be the way to go. With a little consideration and planning, you can begin incorporating polyculture techniques and you'll be on your way to a thriving, sustainable farm or garden. What do you think? Will you grow a polyculture garden? What are your favorite guilds? Share your thoughts below in the comments. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more gardening, homesteading, and farming videos. Thanks so much for watching.